In the 1935 hit song, No Coward May Well Have Advised Mrs. Worthington Not to Put Her Daughter on the Stage. But what would he have thought about the daughter whose stage is the one above the mosh pit? Like many forms of popular music, heavy metal has been dominated by males pretty much since it started. Still, in recent years, more female artists have come to the fore, although whether the Me Too movement increases female participation remains to be seen. The problem is that heavy metal is not merely a musical genre. For some, it is a drug. Blistering riffs, growling vocals, and the sheer volume of sound seeps into some people. It gets them in its grip and it never lets them go. For some, there was almost a religious experience when the endorphins first kicked in. The clouds moved away and suddenly the world could never be the same again as they saw the heavy metal pathway stretching ahead of them, promising so much more of the same. I first got into the metal scene when I was around 13. I discovered Nirvana, which, which was not metal, of course, because it was grunge, but um, I started to listen to Nirvana. Through Nirvana, I got to Courtney Love and Hole, and she was like, oh, this is a female, and she's playing rock and roll, and she is like, she was an idol. Not the very best idol, maybe, for a 14-year-old, a 13, 14-year-old, but I was looking up to her because she was, I, I thought she was so cool sitting with her guitar. And through her, I started to uh, look up other female uh, artists who played rock and there was a band in Sweden called Drain or I think Drain Stockholm after a while because there was another main band called Drain somewhere and they played much heavier music they were an uh, all-female band playing like really heavy riffs <clears throat> and they said that their in, uh, inspiration was mainly Panthera so that's how I started to listen to Panthera and that's how I got into the metal music and when I first heard Panthera and I heard the awesome guitar because first of all I wanted to be a guitar player not the singer I wanted to be a guitar player uh, and when I heard Dimebag for the first time uh, and when I heard the guitar I was like so hooked and then I started to, to go into just listening to metal music and playing metal when I was about 15 I was like okay I really want to be a rock star then I also started to um, look for for female figures uh, and there was not so many uh, I had Jennifer Batten for she was a guitar player that was I was I found her and I was like yeah she's so cool and then had a drain and uh, I didn't find so many right back then I didn't find so many vocalists or uh, yeah, singers, female singers, so I was more playing guitar and I thought that well if there's not so many I need to be one. <laughs> so, so that's how the idea was born of getting into the music business and playing metal because I wanted to be Panthera and then after a while when I started to sing instead, because I realized I was not a good guitar player, uh, I wanted to be Rob Halford or Sebastian Bach, but the female version of Rob Halford and Sebastian Bach. Uh, because I didn't find anyone and I was like, we need one. I can be that. I actually grew up in a musical family. Uh, my dad was in a band and we just had guitars sitting around the house and picked up a bass one day and actually started a band with my brother. So that was my first um, introduction to rock. So I first got into the metal scene in 2011 when I moved to Los Angeles from New York and met guitarist Dave Bates. And Dave was uh, in a band with Robin McCauley, Tony Franklin and Greg Bissonette. And Robin went on tour with Survivor and Dave needed a singer so we started our band, Edge of Paradise, and we never looked back. I started going to shows when I was a teenager. I actually met uh, a girl at band camp, ironically, who really inspired me. She was a bit older and she played bass and was in a metal band and I just thought she was the coolest chick and her band was playing at a local venue um, after the camp and I went to see her band and it was just, it was so neat to me. So I think that's when I started to have an interest in the genre and then, you know, listen to some heavy bands here and there through high school and when I got to college I met one of those people who becomes very instrumental in connecting people in the scene. Um, this guy named Mark, he's in a band called Zenesis, you should look him up if you like tech death. Um, we went to college together 
and he had some friends who lived in my hometown who needed a bass player. And these friends happened to be guys who were about 10 or 15 years older than me. So some of them were closer in age to my mother at the time <laughs> than they were to me. I guess that's still true. Um, but he said, hey, you know, they need a bass player. You're from Brantford. Why don't you go try out? So I tried out and ended up joining their band. And the rest is history. Just more and more um, bands came out of that. My introduction to heavy metal started in high school. And um, back then, it was the early 2000s, so I guess heavy metal, per se, would have been listening to bands like um, Korn, Kitty, Chevelle. Like, that was my introduction to heavier music. But uh, I'd say, I think it was on Much Loud, we had this this video program here in Canada, and uh, Metallica came on, of course, being as big as Metallica are. So, um... Yeah, it was my introduction, but I actually didn't get into heavy metal until I started doing my classical studies. And while I was in university, well, I guess you could say closer to going into my university studies, um, it kind of went hand in hand with falling in love with symphonic metal. So my introduction was Nightwish, Camelot, Within Temptation, and I was listening to them while I was studying classical music, and that had a huge influence on me. So that was like my reintroduction to heavy metal, even though I felt I already had an introduction to heavy metal in high school, just more of the new metal end of it. I got into the metal scene actually when I was 16 years old. I formed my first metal band when I was in high school and I kind of caught the bug after that and forged ahead and went through multiple bands through my adolescence to my early 20s up to present, so it's something that's been with me for a long time. So when I started in the scene of metal, I started by playing the music when I was 7-8 years old, without playing or knowing the metal. I was playing the horn. Then I played the piano. Et c'est finalement, j'ai découvert le métal vers l'âge de peut-être 10-11 ans, quand ma mère s'est remariée avec un homme qui écoutait des groupes comme, bah, comme Deep Purple ou comme Pink Floyd et qui a, qui a ramené mes CD à la maison, qui a ramené une guitare électrique aussi. Donc c'est la première fois que je voyais quelqu'un jouer sur une guitare électrique en vrai. Et puis, quand il est mort, j'ai récupéré ses CD et sa guitare et je me suis mise à écouter du métal ben plus généralement quoi, peut-être du métal plus de l'époque aussi, c'est-à-dire que c'était plutôt Marilyn Manson, Slipknot, euh, tous ces groupes que t'écoutes euh, quand t'as 15 ans et que t'es au lycée quoi. Et puis, euh, je pense que c'est vers mes 17-18 ans que je me suis dit, allez, j'aimerais bien moi aussi jouer du métal, puisqu'après tout euh, j'étais musicienne, et donc j'ai commencé euh, à jouer de la basse, sans grande conviction, et euh, penser à évidemment à intégrer un groupe, mais franchement je l'aurais jamais fait toute seule. C'est-à-dire que euh, j'aurais jamais pris l'initiative toute seule d'aller voir euh, des mecs et de leur dire « Salut, euh, je suis bassiste, est-ce que je peux jouer avec vous ?» D'autant plus que les garçons avec qui je suis sortie à l'époque étaient absolument pas d'accord euh, pour que j'aille jouer dans un groupe avec d'autres mecs. Et donc finalement, c'est quand j'ai rencontré euh, mon actuel mari, Med, que, euh, que ben, on s'est mis à jouer ensemble, donc lui à la guitare et moi à la basse, dans un groupe que lui avait déjà monté avant. Donc où je me suis incrustée en tant que bassiste et c'était un groupe de black metal. Alors c'est pareil, c'était pas forcément euh, pas, pas forcément mon délire, mais bon comme je m'incrustais, euh, j'avais pas trop mon mot à dire et puis euh, mais très vite on a arrêté ce groupe-là et puis on s'est dit qu'on allait monter euh, un groupe de death, brutal death même puisque c'est plus euh, c'est plus mon délire et c'est le sien aussi et donc ça a duré je sais pas peut-être un ou deux ans et on a perdu notre batteur. Il est parti, en fait. Et le temps de le remplacer, je me suis dit, allez, vas-y, juste pour rigoler, euh, je vais me mettre derrière la batterie, puis je vais voir ce que ça donne. Et en fait, euh, ça m'a tellement plu que euh, j'ai progressé très vite. Et au bout de six mois, c'était moi le batteur euh, du groupe. <rire> et euh, voilà. Je suis commencé à aller à des metal concerts quand j'étais 12. Je me suis dit que ma soeur m'a dit que ma soeur m'a dit que ma soeur m'a dit que I was just hanging out with my sister, <laughs> but she'd actually drop me off at shows like Slayer and Hatebreed at these all ages shows, and um, so I got into metal that way. And when I started performing, I 
actually started performing in a metal band around um, 19 years old uh, in Orlando. I was part of a symphonic metal band called Fields of Glass. I played electric cello in the band because I played cello and orchestra and did that for a couple years and met a lot of people in the Orlando metal scene and made a lot of connections which helped me after that band disbanded then I started Auditory Armory where I sing and play guitar and that's my band now that has previous members of Fields of Class. When I was 12 years old I uh, have an older brother that uh, introduced me to heavy metal and uh, we also grew up in a music family so we worked hard as uh, children learning our instruments and singing techniques and uh, we played a lot with uh, friends and our father. In the middle of the 80s I heard heavy metal for the first time and I was instantly catched forever. It took a hold on me because the music, the power, the expressions in the music and singing, uh, the vocal styles was mind-blowing. The first band I listened to was probably like Deep Purple, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Black Sabbath of course, but also uh, artists like uh, King Diamond and uh, Merciful Fate. I was so impressed the male singers that it could reach those high notes and stuff and uh, yeah, I really love heavy metal. If I remember right, I heard Finnish band called Sentenced on the radio and I was like Ooh, what is that band? So rough vocals, uh, who is that guy? I really want to know. And then I started to listen Iron Maiden, Metallica and, oh, and so on. But first time when I heard Nightwish and Tarja Turunen, I was surprised. So pow powerful vocals, powerful woman. And that was the time when I started buying leather jacket and and that kind of stuff. And years later, when I joined a band called Evil One, they introduced me very underground heavy metal bands and that kind of stuff. Uh, since I started to sing with local bands, I didn't start in the metal scene. I was more into alternative rock bands. I participated in a few projects, but nothing huge or serious. It was until I met Harry, or current bassist, and he invited me to be part of a new project, which later became Lost Nebula, an, an alternative metal band. Uh, at the beginning, it was really a challenge to me, because this band was a whole new thing to me. Music, uh, music using uh, all times, guitar solos, metal stuff. I had to study and learn a lot of how to sing in a metal band. You know, I had to look for new artists, bands, and singers in order to fit in the in the style of this new band. I'm still learning, but it has been a great challenge. When I was 13, I first started to listen to grunge and a bit of punk, um, and I started to play drums and quickly I discovered heavy metal uh, with Metallica and Slayer and Sepultura then moving on to Dimmu Borgir and Emperor and, and so on and it became the most important thing in my life. When I was 10 years old my brother, my older brother, he's five years older so he was about 15 and he came home with this Guns N' Roses CD and I'd never heard anything like that I had been into a lot of soul, like uh, Stevie Wonder and Aretha Franklin, and I heard this kind of really different rock, and it was super interesting, and from there I just started digging uh, deeper and heavier, and getting into Pantera, Metallica, and then so on and so on, and um, really, really loving that uh, heavy drum sound. I really love the heavy, uh, fast drums with melodic guitars and 
intricacies of metal music. And that started really young and I got to thank Guns N' Roses for kind of shifting gears on my um, fascinations with music and they not that they were not that they're metal but they definitely opened that gateway to me where I was then intrigued to start uh, discovering further. Most of those converted were men. Indeed it has been pointed out that since its inception hard rock and heavy metal have been overwhelmingly sexist and driven by men. To be fair heavy metal is hardly unique in this. I can remember at school in the 1970s, friends buying Roxy music albums mainly for the album covers, and I'm old enough to remember Cher when she remembered to put her dress on over her underclothes before she came out onto the stage to perform. Still, time moves on, and even now we have any number of female musicians who are an integral part of the heavy metal scene. Not just as singers, but guitarists and drummers as well. What we discovered was that once the female musician has taken the plunge and joined the scene, there are still unanswered questions. Do nice girls play heavy metal? Also, with more girls jumping into the mosh pit, is this having an impact on a scene that was downright misogynist? Well, I mean, I guess everything comes down to personal life experience. I'd like to think of heavy metal like I think of anything else. It's equal opportunity. The fact that heavy metal is dominated by men uh, is nobody's fault. It's just what... It's just the way it went, I suppose. Yeah, it makes more sense that dudes like this type of music. It's aggressive, it's fucking atonal, it's weird. It's macho, I suppose. I, I think so, in a way, you know? But I think I think it's sick that, that women are getting more into it now. Like, you got... We played a show in London, that must have been, it was probably right before you started with us, it was when Sammy B was filling in on bass, mm -hmm. and it was a festival type thing, it was a bunch, bunch of packages got mixed together, and there was a band called Nervosa, yeah, which is like all, Brazil, all female they're... band, yeah. thrash band, great, they were a fuck great band, and that was the first time I'd heard of them, and they look like they're like climbing Real good and doing really well. Yeah, there's and others that I think are rad. And we so toured with Venom Prison out here last yeah. year, female fronted. Yeah, I think that it is true that the climb for for women in metal has been a little bit harder because metal has been so male dominated dominated in the past. But I think that's definitely changing. I'm seeing in the last five years more female songwriters in metal, female fronted metal bands, and not just like, oh, I have to be sexy, I mean like badass uh, female fronted metal bands, and also female guitarists, female drummers, and I think that's changing the climate, so I think we're going towards that. Uh, my experience with this is that when I started to play guitar, probably like, oh, almost 15 years ago, I think I would go to like guitar uh, expos and things like that and I was pretty much the only female guitarist there and um, also I think there's it, it has been hard to sometimes be taken seriously as a musician uh, because I do play guitar and not just sing but even if I did just sing you know people kind of expect you sometimes to kind of dress sexy or dress a certain way because that has been the stereotype in the past in metal um, but it has kind of melted away and um, I think we're, we're seeing a change in there and it's going to be a lot more it's a lot going to be a lot more easy for females to to progress in metal just for being talented. Um, I feel that today in the heavy metal world there are a good percentage of women and we all band together and really support one another and I think that is so cool. Um, it is still a male dominated industry and huge problem that myself and many women in the industry uh, face is that we are a, a threat. Um, it's been so male dominated for so long and because of that when we can come in and we can do someone's job just as good as them or sometimes even better um men tend to get very threatened by this and i've seen some really shady horrible things uh that have been done to push people away um to make them lose their jobs when there was no premise for them to lose their job in the first place um 
it's difficult. I feel as women, there's more pressure on us to withhold this extremely professional persona and uh, we don't have as much fun and we can't enjoy ourselves as much as men do because there's such a fine microscope on us and that's always made it very difficult and uncomfortable but I love that when we as women uh, whether we're musicians or crew when we band together we have a community and we can kind of let loose a little and not worry about someone being nasty and trying to um, lose us our job or do anything to hurt us um, but things are getting better and I've been very lucky to say that I am in a position where I work with men who are extremely supportive and my gender doesn't really matter and I'm really grateful for that so um, I felt the pressure and the um, negative vibes before in the past but that's not an issue for me anymore and I'm very grateful for that <laughs> T'as as plus vite, euh, en fait, tu te fais plus vite remarquer. Ouais, t'as dit, la curiosité, en voilà. fait. Mmh. C'est ça. Du coup, tu vas plus vite avoir des spectateurs. Donc, tu vas peut-être plus vite être visible. D'ailleurs, je pense que, que ça commence à, à se savoir et qu'il y a des gens qui, volontairement, euh, cherchent à avoir une musicienne dans leur groupe parce qu'ils euh, savent que ça va être un plus en termes d'image. Après, si on parle d'ascension en tant que vrai musicien, je pense qu'effectivement, c'est beaucoup plus dur de gagner sa légitimité quand on est une fille. Mmh. Et euh, ouais, c'est très très dur et je pense que ça dépend aussi du, du poste auquel tu te trouves. Moi je dis ça parce que dans ma propre expérience, j'ai trouvé ça euh, beaucoup plus facile entre guillemets d'être une fille bassiste que d'être une fille batteuse. Parce que euh, bah, peut-être que des filles bassistes il y en a un petit peu plus déjà. Et que euh, peut-être que, je sais pas, la base dans l'imaginaire des gens, c'est... La, la plupart des gens, c'est méchant de dire ça, mais ils se disent que la base, c'est facile. Il faut juste refaire les mêmes notes que la guitare, en fait. Donc, tu as, as juste à, 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 appuyer, à gratter une corde et, et c'est bon, tu peux faire partie d'un groupe. Donc, du coup, ils se disent, ah, il y a une fille dans un groupe, c'est soit qu'elle chante lyrique, soit qu'elle joue de la basse. Voilà. Ouais, puis, ouais. je pense que la batterie, c'est associé au contraire euh, à la force. Ouais, ouais. À la force, la euh, ouais, ouais. à la musculinité, du coup. Quoi. Moi, j'ai vraiment eu le sentiment que quand je suis devenue batteur, batteuse, d'ailleurs, euh, même ce mot-là, il est pourri, enfin, je sais pas comment ça va donner en anglais, mais euh, en français, c'est ridicule, quoi. Et euh, j'ai vraiment l'impression que quand je suis devenue batteuse, je marchais sur... Euh, je dérangeais, en fait. Je commençais à, à marcher sur les plates-bandes euh, des mecs et euh, des gens qui était absolument pas dérangé par le fait que je sois bassiste, qui venait euh, me soutenir, euh, qui venait euh, hurler ton nom dans le public et tout parce que c'était potes, c'est normal, qui venait te voir jouer en répète, etc. À partir du moment où, euh, où moi je suis devenue batteuse, ben c'est ça s'arrêtait quoi. C'était euh, c'était ah ouais mais non. Euh, donc ouais je pense qu'en tant que musicienne euh, Enfin, pour gagner sa légitimité en tant que musicienne, c'est beaucoup plus dur quand t'es une fille. Mmh. Ouais, moi aussi j'ai eu des remarques euh, assez, euh, <rire> assez pessimistes. Enfin, C'était vraiment en mode, euh, oui, euh, les filles, elles peuvent pas faire ce type de chant, euh, c'est pas, pas possible physiquement. Enfin, c'est n'importe quoi, parce que le corps humain est capable de faire des sons incroyables. Tout le monde est capable de faire ce genre de son, c'est juste qu'il euh, faut s'entraîner. Oui, une fille a une voix plus aiguë qu'un qu garçon, c'est vrai. Ben, on sait s'entraîner pour la faire plus grave. Il suffit de, de s'entraîner un petit peu plus. Et la saturation, tout le monde est capable de, de rajouter cet effet. C'est juste qu'il y a un petit déclic à avoir. Et c'est vrai que moi aussi, il y, y a plein de gens qui, quand ils m'entendaient, ils me disaient Mais t'as une pédale cachée quelque part, euh, c'est pas possible, c'est pas ta voix. Enfin, si, c'est ma voix. <rire> et du coup, ouais, du coup les trucs peut-être qu'on qu peut reprocher aux mecs, ben, on va te les reprocher encore plus parce que t'es une fille. Moi. Ouais, ouais. Mais ils sont vraiment à la recherche du petit détail pour pouvoir t'enfoncer en fait. So in the past, yes, females in music have had a tougher time climbing the heavy metal ladder. But I think we came at a time in 2011 where there's been a lot of female fronted metal bands on the rise. Like Hailstorm, In This Moment, also in Europe, Epica Within Temptation, and of course Nightwish, Arch Enemy. So Um, in a way that was inspiring to us and we just focused on creating the music we are proud of and you know it took us a while to find our sound and of course the band kept evolving and I came from a background of classical music and theater so I never really thought about um, you know females not having an equal level playing field and just focused on becoming the best singer that I can be. So in a way for us, 
um, we didn't really cross that issue. And when we did, it wasn't really a big deal because um, we've started to have so many amazing supporters that we are so grateful for. And I think if you really focus on creating music that you are really proud of and you think will, ta uh, will stand the test of time, then the band will keep growing whether you are a female or not. Well, historically that has been the case, but I've never really had a problem with it. Even at a young age, you know, I was playing in bands with all guys and I was always accepted in as a female. Um, and as far as uh, working to change it, I'm living it. I'm still fronting bands and doing my thing. Being 12 in the music business, in the metal world as a girl was tough. Many of the listeners and the people around us uh, kept asking the other guys why a girl was singing in their band and uh, the goofy ones that uh, also was like whoa could a girl sing like this and uh, you know it's uh, it was just annoying and uh, really tiring but I kept uh, developing and I kept uh, singing uh, metal because I love it uh, I will be uh, a metal girl forever that's just it. There still are a few in this business that really don't think that metal belongs to girls also. They may not say it, but they keep showing it. And that is just so sad. Really sad. Re really sad to not be taken seriously because I am a woman. Well, definitely being a female in a metal genre, you're definitely treated like a sexual object. Um, I've been in bands where I've had bandmates make sexual comments, make me uncomfortable, and it's kind of something that you just have to suck up and take. Um, but luckily we're making movements, we're making changes to hopefully eradicate that and just have more of a mutual respect. Um, I've worked with producers who have tried to sleep with me, um, who've tried to change me aesthetically um, to be more mass appeal. Uh, all I can hope for in the future is if people want to change, they have to stop buying into it. And uh, that's kind of what I'm trying to do with this project is kind of create a world where everybody's accepted and everything is okay. I've been pretty lucky so far kind of not to have been the victim of sexual discrimination in the music industry. I do know of other female musicians who have faced this, whether it's like comments from the sound engineer saying that they can't go on the stage because um, no women are allowed on his stage or whether it's a venue refusing to put on female acts. On the whole, everyone I've interacted with has been pretty cool about it, if anything, viewing it as something that helps us stand out from the crowd and more of a positive thing. I have had one person make a negative comment after we did a Black Sabbath tune and he basically said, like, women should sing metal kind of vibe. I might have the few comments of, oh, I normally hate female vocals, but actually really enjoy your set. So hopefully that's helping to open people's minds a little bit and change their perception of females in metal music because we're mainly playing smaller shows it makes it a bit easier because if people don't really like what we're doing then they can just walk away as opposed to feeling like they need to kind of shout in our face as much because we're pretty much exclusively DIY that plays a massive part too so I don't have someone kind of stand over me saying you need to act like this or you need to dress like this in order for us to be successful I also don't look at the fact that our fans are predominantly male as a negative thing because I don't think that men are so narrow-minded as to only listen to music by men um, I know a lot of men who are very strong supporters of women in music. My experience with this started very early since, I mean, I was 15 and 95. And back in 95, we didn't have that many female uh, musicians in metal. Uh, so I remember very clearly that it was very popular to play music in my school. It was very popular. Every guy was having a band and they played mostly grunge back then or but some of them played like Megadeth and Metallica uh, but it was always male and when I said oh, I want to start a band too because I, I wanted to start a band and uh, they were like 
clapping my head and like well you are gonna start a band let's see how that goes uh, which just gave me more energy to start a band and more like fuck them I'm gonna start a band uh, and I met that so much when I was younger that people didn't really thought that I really wanted to play metal and I wanted to start a band they thought that it was some kind of idea that my boyfriend had or whatever um, which pissed me off <laughs> so that got me really like I was when I was younger I was even more like this <laughs> I'm gonna do this um, so I forced my best friends <laughs> females to start a band with me I was playing guitar singing and playing flute uh, and uh, Jill she was playing drum and Lotta was I was playing bass and they couldn't play but I, I forced them to, to uh, take lessons and I forced them to play with me because I wanted the band so then we had a female band all female band Sisters of Kali and we, I, we, had, we had so much fun we were not very good but we had so much fun and we actually we played heavy heavy music so uh, so I think that it started there and I, I could see that we can do this even if people were still a little bit or guys in my age were like oh that will pass uh, you should like move on and start cooking and sewing things they actually told me that why are you not home cooking or sewing things and I was like I hate sewing I'm not good at cooking I am good at cooking today um, but I, all I want to do was play music so uh, so yeah I met that a lot and I think it was when I got into Sister Sin in 2003 uh, 2002 2003 I, I think I got into them uh, I got into Sister Sin the band Sister Sin um, I also had that challenge that even the band members kind of didn't took me seriously they took me seriously but they didn't took all of my opinion seriously or they didn't listen to me in the beginning and I also felt that we as a band always had like a wall okay you are just gonna play here because you have a female that's front of band it's you have a female singer in a rock and roll sleaze, sleaze rock and roll metal band uh, that's that's only there it's only there for you are playing here um, yeah when I was young it was a lot of lot of that actually and then there was like a turning point I can I can remember it because musicians around me guys that were were like real real musicians but real musicians or B musicians they thought they were very uh, famous or they were thought are like oh yeah I'm so cool because I play in this and this this band they were like ignoring me and then there was kind of a change and suddenly they all had this respect for me and they all started to talk to me and they were like oh hey this is all lab which was weird kind of but f also fun of course and i think that was after sisters in release their first record and we did our first u.s tour and it was like we also played sweden rock and i think that after that it was like when w once you had gained the respect it, it was much easier for me then suddenly oh well this is Liv and she's really good and she plays in this really good band called Sister Sin so once I gained respect it was like a new world suddenly people listened to me more so still there is that kind of idea that if you are playing your rock or metal you are a guy but I think it's much better today and today we have so much more there's so so many good female actors out there or act musicians I mean musicians it could be a positive thing too because it makes you stand out but it can also be a negative thing because this is something that I uh, recognize quite um, uh, recently that <clears throat> some festivals think of think of it as they have the female quote 
And once they have the female quote in, it's like, oh, we already have female fronted bands. We already have two female fronted bands at this festival, so we, we don't take anymore. And it's like, what? So you mean we can't play because you think it's enough female musicians or female fronted bands on your festival? Uh, so I think it's still out there, which is we're weird. It's like, just book us, just book whatever bands. Uh, it's good to have different bands on the festival and don't say that this is full. The quote for female musician is full. Being a woman hasn't been a hindrance to me in my career as a metal weekend warrior. Like you said, um, men are the primary consumers and producers, but in the 15 to 20 years that I've been involved in metal, I've seen more and more women come into the fold, both in the, in the audience and in the bands. Also, if there's one thing a lot of men like, it's women. So that can actually be helpful in some situations. Not that I try to market that, but it's just a fact. As a woman at a metal show who's getting on stage, people will always have their eye on you. Um, this hasn't happened as often in recent years, but many times I've been asked, oh, are you sure you're in the band? I'm sure. Like, I've been going for the stage, but are you sure? I'm sure, thanks. Um, a lot of times I get, oh wow, you're really good for a girl, like, oh man. And I think that people are trying to have good intentions with comments like that, but I mean, I've been playing bass since I was 14, so if I'm not pretty good by now, I've been doing something wrong, you know? Uh, so to try to change that perception, you know, I've just been playing music with uh, metal bands for 15 years, but also I run a blog called Alternative Control, and I try to make a point to spotlight uh, women musicians. To be honest, it hasn't been tough because I'm not in the spotlight, not not yet. However, if we talk about the path to be in the spotlight, yes, it is difficult being a woman. I think it's because the metal scene demands a very tough image and that's easier for a man than a woman. Uh, but the metal is not only about style, it's about trust me, about music, about express feelings, and that's what I'm doing. I could dress like Ozzy Osbourne to be spotted, but I don't want to copy a style just to fit in the metal scene. I'd rather to show myself as who I am. I'm trying to make a difference showing that a woman can be as metal as a man. I don't have a specific example of what I'm doing to challenge change this perception, uh, but I'm really sure I'm using my own style, my own image to fit in the metal scene. My experience being a female in a metal band has been um, fortunately a good one. I'm very lucky to work with the people that I do. I don't face, you know, much discrimination um, with amongst the people that I work with. I've heard, however, horror stories about, you know, women who are in bands being asked, oh, so whose girlfriend are you? Like, it's, it's, it's insane and, and even worse, you know, being targeted um, and, and, and abused or, you know, just the, the hate that, that is online, you know, and it's, um, it's really sad. You know, what's interesting is, is I really do believe that while it might not seem like it, women have always been here. I'm sure that women have always been, you know, metal fans and rock fans, you know, and, and there have always been women musicians. There are more women doing this every day and that's huge more and more women are deciding I'm gonna do this as a career and and that's a big deal and and there are women who have always been there all along continuing to do what they've always done and that's huge as well I think the more the merrier it's not just something that's for men so I'm in a very tough position being in cradle filth because cradle filth has is extremely over sexualized women and uh, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of brutality towards women, I guess, in some of the artwork. Um, I mean, Cradle Filth is known for the famous t-shirt with the nun masturbating on the front of it. Cool. And, uh, 
you know, I coming into this band, I mean, I was told I was only going to be a six month job and then I wasn't going to be part of it anymore, but I've been here over six years. And, um, you know, I, I often asked our lead singer Danny, like, why do you feel the need to over sexualize women? But in the way he described it to me, actually, it's women having the power and celebrating their bodies. Um, you know, so there's always this kind of negative attitude towards this display, but really if you talk to the artist who's conducting it, um, it makes a little more sense. And I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's great because we've been able to give models and actresses jobs, even if they're naked. Um, so I think if anything, you know, he wants to liberate women and he is a bit of a feminist in that way. But uh, when it comes to other heavy metal, yeah, I mean, there's definitely some really sexist stuff out there. And uh, it's just because in this industry, it kind of becomes like this mob mentality of like being a boys club. And they're not thinking about like, how it's going to affect women entering the industry. Nobody really thinks ahead. I know this sounds really horrible, but I think everyone's really short-sighted because they don't think about the future and what's going to happen in the future. And a lot of people just, you know, if it's not affecting them immediately, then they're, they're not going to consider it. But women are becoming a big percentage of the industry, whether it's business crew or musicians. And yeah, I mean, art is art, but uh, consciously changing that, I'm just trying to which is exhausting, um, maintain a positive attitude, and, um, I've always kind of, uh, you know, it's very reflective. There's a lot of awareness that you need to have, and when someone's acting out or being sexist or whatever in a negative way, I just sit back and I realize, you know, this is not a poor reflection of me, it's a poor reflection of them, because I'm just here trying to do my job and do what I love for a living, and then they're gonna come at me like that. They're the problem, not me. Um, which took many years of practice, but uh, I think it's also supporting women and celebrating them, and that is what the change needs to be. And I feel very lucky because there's a lot of strong women out there in the industry, and they all support one another. I have some of um, the most well-known, established names in the industry supporting me, um, which I feel very, very grateful for. So there's that, and uh, you know, and and talking about it and being aware of what's going on. I think the hashtag Me Too movement was a huge step in the right direction. It was scary, but then everyone could come out with their stories and yeah, people lost jobs and rightfully so because in this industry there's no union and that's what makes it so scary and that's where there's no rules and if there if this industry was unionized, I'm pretty sure a huge massive chunk of uh gentlemen <laughs> would be uh fired already, but yeah, you know, it it is what it is, um but it is getting better and that's the important part. I don't think the applying is tougher for women, but there are some advantages and some disadvantages. For example, uh, as a disadvantage, uh, when you go on stage, um, uh, you will attract attention no matter what when you're a girl. Um, people want to see how good or how bad this girl can play and they might comment about it between themselves. You will always attract more, a little more attention. So again, when you start off, that can be an added stress. And secondly, uh, there is something that will never change. The less mature part of the crowd will always judge the way you look, even unconsciously, when you look at the most popular ladies in heavy metal, 95% of them are very beautiful women and sometimes they are wearing very revealing costumes. And this aspect of things, um, when you start off, when you're, when you're a young girl, you're not 100% confident with your body, less, like most young girls, it can discourage you, you just think I can't be this person, um, but it's true that on the other hand there are some advantages in being a woman in heavy metal scene and uh, unfortunately it's especially the case if you are a beautiful woman, if you play well enough I think you attract more fans than a man doing the same thing. I definitely think so, the more women get playing metal, 
Um, the more they show their writing skills, the more they show that they've been practicing loads, the more they will gain respect. I think it's all about this. Gain your popularity um, from your skills, from your music, and not from showcasing your body. And I think um, as far as changing the attitude of metal, um, where maybe it looks at women lyrically in a bad light or a um, sexist light or um, whatever, I, I think maybe that's just a bit more of an old thing. Across the board, uh, metal really has started to become very meaningful genre. Um, there is a lot of um, interesting stories and they don't have to be factual. Um, some of the songs I write, they, they could be about, um, I don't know, mythical creatures and vampires and demons. And, but it's beyond that physical persona, visual that's created, there's messaging within that where it, sometimes it could be looking um, deeper into your soul, maybe finding yourself, maybe testing your limits, testing your strengths and weaknesses. So I think w what is really in interesting about metal is that even though it has this ability to be somewhat theatrical um, because of some of the subject matter, there is a lot more meaning behind it and so uh, what's really cool is when you get um, really amazing metal musicians they can musically make amazing things uh, come to life with the sound but there's also a lot of meaning in um, the poetry of the songs and um, I think that will definitely be a great way to change some of the, the old ideologies. So yeah, in the past there have been very misogynistic and violent lyrics about women in metal. I think they were supposed to be taken as a joke, kind of like a kind of campy, but for me as a female, I don't really, you know, I don't really like it, you know? So um, I think that's changing. And I mean, I respect bands for what they do and their legacy, but take, for example, Cannibal Corpse or any of those extreme bands or extreme grindcore metal bands, you know, talking about, you know, raping a female and, you know, cutting a fetus out of her and, you know, fucking her corpse and, and that. And, like, to me that's extreme. You know, why couldn't it be, why can't it not be a guy? You know, that, that is. So I think, um, and for me, the way that I'm changing that is writing thoughtful lyrics and writing music that portrays an image that's a story or conveys a mood rather than just kind of blatant lyrics that are very violent or sexist and I do see a lot more female hard rock and metal bands doing this too where they are kind of flipping the script and saying like oh I like basically my pussy owns you <laughs> sort of thing and be like, you know what, we can do the same kind of thing. So it's kind of like if you're going to be cheeky about about you know, about that kind of thing in metal, it's like, oh, females can do the same thing. There is a tougher climb for women in metal to reach the spotlight. Yeah, it has always been like that. And um, today we can see an amazing bunch of bands coming up with female musicians and um, I guess we have a lot to thank the bands that build some names and really put effort in being a big touring band and they have been working their asses off to to reach the spotlight and so we can say that they also did an amazing job for other female metal musicians the thing is that if you are a female metal musician you have to prove it all the time you have to prove that you are a good musician and that is somehow annoying, but also the women that work this hard 
become really great. Uh, yeah. And I think that it, it is like that to, to just reach this level of uh, being accepted. And lyrics about violence and the degradation of women? When rappers clean up their act, then perhaps heavy metal will be shamed into it. But who goes to a metal concert to listen to the words? But now we have bands with female members such as Arch Enemy, In This Moment, and Hailstorm, and so many more. They're releasing great music and they are achieving considerable success. It remains to be seen whether they get the respect they deserve from the rest of the scene. Or are they just considered chick? A pretty poster girl pasted there to conceal the outright sexism that still exists. Will the genre finally accept them and will they be remembered by the band name rather than being written off as a female fronted act? Of course it's it's not. Um, when you think about it now it's like how could you write those things sometimes? Uh, it's yeah it's quite um, nasty things in, in a lot of lyrics and you and, and I don't think I thought about it so much when I was younger but I, I think about it today and uh, I do think that it can, it can change uh, but we have to change the environment around it um, it has to change from the inside and out if, if we started to change how we see people then the, the lyrics we write about people will all, also change so I think it has to change from the inside out uh, and to not write. And I think today that we as women and females, we are not as tolerant anymore. You can't really write those lyrics like you used to before because there's someone is going to protest. And I think that's a really good thing. So it, it has to change from both ways, both that we as a female will command or like uh, say that this is not okay and also uh, um, men, males will have to change from the inside and out. If they change their perspective on people, on women, their their whole idea about uh, the, the female creature or, or the whole idea about the, a, a woman, I think that the, the writing of the lyrics will change too and you will not write those things. That's my opinion. So in the past, yes, of course, there has been music where women have been degraded, but it doesn't only happen in metal, it happens in other genres, and as a society, I think we are moving towards a better change where women are more respected. And in a way, it is up to us, because look at so many great female musicians out there. They are undeniable, and they deserve respect, and, you know, they do get respect and there's always going to be haters. So I think if our attitude is focused on the positive and if we think that we are equal and we are focusing on creating something great, something that we are proud of, um, the haters will have no ground. And, uh, and myself, we always try to make the songs empowering and lyrically, I put a lot of heart and soul into it and you know for me personally I think music should be something positive uh, because there's already so much hate in this world and there's so many issues that we don't agree on music should be something that unites us it's a universal language that should be empowering and positive and bring light to someone's life so that is our attitude towards it and I hope that can be yours too. This is quite a difficult one because whilst obviously misogynist lyrics are still a prominent theme in certain subgenres of metal and obviously especially common in the 80s, I would personally say I noticed the sexualization of women more in lyrics in pop music. And it is difficult because obviously it's a creative industry, it is art, and with a lot of things it is open to interpretation. The artist's intention isn't always obvious. Maybe that's why I kind of notice it a bit more um, in pop because I think with pop lyrics, they tend to be a little bit more kind of at face value, a bit more obvious, whereas metal lyrics tend to be a bit more ambiguous and be a bit more kind of open to interpretation. In regard to the misogynistic and violent lyrics, I think it's stupid. It's 2019, Cannibal Corpse already did it better than your crappy local death metal band, so get over it and be more creative. I've walked out of some sets with some particularly misogynistic lyrics. Uh -huh. 
I don't support it. It is changing because the society by itself is changing the way they think. But in my case, I decided to transmit through my lyrics uh, using different topics. I know lyrics in metal in general are about beer, the devil, death, carnage, dragons, etc. Uh, but when, I, when Harry and I started to write the lyrics, uh, we agreed to not be part of the ordinary. I mean, um, why do we have to write about the same topics everyone do? So we decided to use more interesting lyrics. Most of the lyrics are about the human mind, its behavior with itself, and what it's around of it. Topics that can influence the people, doesn't matter who is listening to them. Me as a woman, I want to uh, I want the metal community to start to see the woman as equal. Let's do, let's do it in a different way. Let's show the people that metal music can be diverse using other kind of topics in the lyrics. I'm sure uh, with the time, metal music will start to forget about making women less. I'm just being myself. I'm just doing what I do. It's not like, oh, women haven't been a part of this and now we're fighting to be a part of this. It's like we've been around all along, we have belonged in this scene all along, we're taking our rightful place where we've always been, where we've always belonged. It's, it's a beautiful thing to me. There are so many female fronted bands and bands that have female musicians in them that I love and, and women make some of the best music in the world. You know, so um, it's important to me that we have the opportunities to express ourselves. And um, that's exactly what's happening. So I'm very happy with that. I don't, I haven't personally noticed, um, you know, a, a lot of um, lyrics that are, are degrading specifically to women in metal. I think um, in rap, that's huge, you know, but in, in metal, I, I haven't really come across much of that. And if there is, if that is a thing, it needs to be squashed immediately, obviously. But if anyone is out there, you know, writing metal lyrics that are degrading to women, you know, I'd say good luck because there's a there's a insane amount of of metal fans that actually are women. So good luck selling records. Um, I I don't think it's like when you do something like that, you you intentionally or unintentionally put yourself in this tiny little box, like. Why would you want to do what? Like, I guess if that's what you believe, why are you even doing this? You know, metal is about everyone being included. Metal is about, I'm just going to say metal is not a place for racism or sexism. Bottom line. I think the view about women in metal has changed tremendously and positively. Um, the remaining few who keep having this kind of views uh, are the ones being mocked nowadays, I think. Um, and there are enough examples out there of great female heavy metal musicians to shut them all up. Um, ladies can play just as good as men, as long as they practice enough. Uh, yes, I, I, I feel that that's, that's moving forward. It's moving forward. I feel that there is more respect today than when I first started, but I feel that we are not yet there. Uh, there's still a real long way to go and it will take time because it, this has been for such a long time that men has been, um, has the power and have had the power and FEMA has been underneath the men. So it will take a long time to change. I hope not that long time, but um, but I think it's it, it's gonna take time, and also here it's from the inside out. 
um, we have to enlighten the new the the young youth today and the the young men and the young uh, women the, the, we have to enlighten them on how to be more respectful and what is okay and what is not okay and we have to push the, the, the girls to, to take more space and we have to ask the, um, the boys to back off a little bit and let the girls take more space. I think if anything women are becoming more sexual objects and I, I see it all the time on Instagram I see a lot of peers and people who I performed with it's all about sex sex sells sex sells and like I said it's a consumerism thing um, you know aesthetically people want to be attracted to you people want to fantasize about you you create a fantasy you create a world I mean all I can say is um, my hope is people will get discovered because they're talented and people won't buy into that so in the past yes of course there have been degrading portrayal of women in metal and it's just in society in general but I do think we're moving towards a change in that as well I can't say that it doesn't happen anymore but I have been very fortunate that it didn't happen to us maybe because I have you know bodyguards in the band but I think partly it's because you really have to put focus on the music and that's what we've been trying to do from very beginning because you know we are aware of that and you know, I'm a big believer that, you know, women are entitled to wear whatever they want and, you know, present themselves however they want. But I think the reality is however you present yourself is what you're going to attract. So I'm not going to say that it's right for someone to disrespect that because it's not. But it's just reality and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon and I think for men too it's not an easy thing to do it can be a struggle for men and women it's a tough thing to be in a new band and uh, you know become successful so um, that's why we really focus at creating the best music we can so you know 10 20 30 years from now we can look back and we are still proud of what we did and there will always be haters but we can't focus on that we can we can't encourage that we just have to rise above it and uh, focus on what we're doing and just keep moving forward bon alors moi je suis peut-être optimiste mais euh, j'aurais tendance à dire que oui quand même je pense que les femmes sont quand même de plus en plus respectées ça ne veut pas dire que euh, c'est le top encore, hein, que c'est l'idéal, mais de euh, toute façon, après, euh, c'est. je pense qu'il n'y a aucun milieu euh, musical dans lequel euh, tout le monde est parfaitement respecté, hein, que ce soit les femmes, que ce soit les gens qui ont une certaine religion, les, je sais pas, les gens qui ont, certaines, euh, qui ont une certaine préférence sexuelle, les gens qui ont un certain physique. Euh, je pense que de toute façon, il n'y a, a aucun milieu où tout le monde est respecté, c'est humain malheureusement. Mm -hmm. Mais j'ai quand même tendance à dire que vu qu'il y a de plus en plus de femmes dans ce milieu, au bout d'un moment, les gens sont bien obligés de se rendre compte que euh, ben ouais, elles sont là et, et pour certaines, euh, ce sont des, des super musiciennes et que du coup, il n'y a pas de raison qu'on ne les respecte pas. Hein. J'ai une petite expérience pour avoir sonorisé un peu en concert et j'en ai fait beaucoup dans le métal et ça s'est toujours bien passé. Et j'en ai fait quelques-uns dans le rock ou la pop. Et, dans un, enfin, et cela, c'était déjà beaucoup plus difficile parce que déjà, on, on voyait arriver derrière la console, c'était euh, genre, qu'est-ce que tu fais là Il y en a un, une fois, il m'a dit, donc je, enfin, je suis arrivée pour lui dire, voilà, je vais sonoriser tel groupe, est-ce que tu peux me montrer un peu tes branchements Et le gars, il m'a regardé de haut en bas et il m'a dit, non, mais une femme, c'est dans une cuisine, pas derrière une console. Et bon, bah, quand tu entends ça, tu es là, ok, merci. Metal has always been kind of more popular with men, so naturally it attracts more male musicians. And I don't have an issue with women being in the minority because I think that's an equal representation of the musicians in the genre. My issue is with the sexualization of women in music. The songs that I write are empowering to women. A lot of Owl Maker's songs have a female narrator for the lyrics, even though it's a man singing them. So kudos to Simon for being flexible and uh, living in the now. I found that the more I get into the stoner and doom genres, um, the less misogyny I see. There are a lot of women involved in that scene, both as fans and as musicians and singers. 
and I think it's really positive. There are a lot of naked chicks in the artwork, but like we said before, if there's one thing that a lot of men like, it's women, so I guess you're going to see that, but I find that a lot more innocuous than the violent lyrics about killing prostitutes. I think because it's, it is not common to see a woman in a metal band, it doesn't matter the role, but it is impressive to see a woman as a musician since it is proof that things are changing in the metal scene. Let's remember to Simon Simons, Fleur Jensen, Tarja Turunen, Angela Gosso. They show to the world that women can make a huge impact in the metal scene. They are much more talented than many men in the world. They are showing that both men and women uh, can contribute to the metal music to make it bigger and better. I do feel that women are gaining more respect in the industry. There's been so many uh, musicians that have come up lately that like are you know revered for being in a metal band. I mean, uh, Sarah Longfield, amazing guitarist. Nina Strauss, amazing guitarist. Um, Orianthi, amazing guitarist, respected. Uh, and who else? There's so many. Um, Yvette Young from Covet. And I'm probably missing some female drummers. I'm biased because I know more. I know more female guitarists, uh, and even like bands like Hailstorm, In This Moment, Ginger, The Pretty Reckless. Those are bands that are revered for their talent, and people, you know, men and women alike, rock out to their songs. Not just like, oh, I like that band because they have a hot chick. It has a history also uh, from the '80s that uh, women was really uh, disrespected in lyrics. Most of the lyrics just contained sex, drugs, and women. So also there, that, that at that time it was portraying for women in metal, just as uh, being groupies or something. Over the years, of course, this uh, have uh, changed a lot, uh, and I'm uh, <laughs> I'm very thankful for that. Nowadays, women are more respected uh, musicians uh, in the metal scene. It's interesting um, to think about because on the one hand, if women want to take off their clothes and if that's how they want to show up, then that's their, they should have the choice to do that. You know, if you want to wear a skimpy outfit and if that's what you want to wear you should have the choice to do that without it being viewed as oh she's being a slut like maybe she's just wearing what she want what she likes to wear you know on the other hand you think about oh who who d d did she really choose to wear that in that video you know was there somebody else saying okay this is what you need to wear this is what you need to look like it, it leads you to question that, you know? But a lot of the time when you don't know whether it was the artist's personal choice or whether it was someone telling them this is what you need to wear or, or this is how you need to look if you want to sell records, it's hard to say. But what I can say is that I think that as far as women earning, earning more respect from the metal community and from the, the music industry in general. I don't think what we're out to do is to earn the respect of men. That's not why we're here. I don't think we give a single fuck about that. I think what we're here to do is to talk to the people who are intelligent enough to hear what we have to say. I think what we're here to do is to speak to the people that our message is for. And I know for me personally, my message certainly is not for someone who's sexist or racist. And I say this very often, if you're either of those things, my music is not for you, you need to go somewhere else. Um, I'm not out to earn respect from any man. That's not why I'm doing this. You know, that's such a, mm, that's such a small 
thing, you know? If I were just in this as a woman to earn respect from men who, who you know, maybe they're veterans of the metal scene or whatever, that would be really sad because I think that there's so much more to me and to women who do this than earning respect, you know? Respect is a good thing to have. I don't think that's what we're, I don't think we're even focusing on that. I guarantee you, you could, you know, name any woman who, who is in this industry doing this and ask them why they're doing this and they would not say to, I'm trying to earn respect from, from men who do this. It's not even on our minds. We're trying to, each, each of us individually has a broader, more important message. And I think we're just focusing on that. I, I don't see any women out there who give a rat's ass what any man thinks of her. I don't see, especially in this genre, I, I don't see any women in the metal genre who are either fronting bands or are members in bands or whatever giving a single fuck what any man thinks. I see heavy metal as an expression of rage or sadness or epicness or power or pick your favorite, but it's not an expression of masculinity. Metal doesn't belong to a gender. Um, and I can see a lot of ladies in heavy metal crowds and sometimes it feels like they are 50% of the crowd. Um, so I would like them to also be 50% of the musicians on stage. I don't know if it's a, a lack of confidence that stops them from doing it. Um, are they scared to be judged or to the doubt that they can be good enough? Um, they must not be scared. They can all do it. They can all put the work. And if it's their dream, they should go for it. And yes, they will be accepted. I think it would take time. And, uh, and maybe not during when we are alive, but yeah, I think so. And I look forward to that. And, um, and I think that we as females, we need to take some of that masculinity and grab it and just take, use it. And I think the men need to take some of that. I think that the, the men need to uh, like grab onto their female side and uh, use that. Then we can be more balanced and we can be more equal. And that will also lead into, it will be more normal and it will be totally normal with females in middle and in everywhere, as leaders, everything. And I think we're heading that way. I hope we're heading that way. And I think we make sure that we are heading that way. All right? So I definitely do foresee a future where female musicians will be fully accepted into the metal scene. And we are almost there. I mean, look at all the amazing females in bands that are doing really great things and creating amazing music. But I think first thing we have to do is stop with the female-fronted metal genre. I think some people think it is a genre, which is not the case. Because if you take Arch Enemy and you take Epica and you take Hailstorm, those are completely different bands. And you take us and you can't really compare us to Arch Enemy, you know? It's just, there's so many different styles of metal that have female singers. So we just have to forget that that can be a genre and, and focus on the music. So I definitely think we are almost there and I want to say thank you to those amazing bands with female uh, singers out there who are paving the way for the bands on the rise. And if you are a hater of females in heavy metal bands, and I just feel sorry for you because there's so much great music out there that you're missing out on. But everybody's entitled to their opinion. 
just keep it to yourself you don't have to disrespect because it only makes you look bad so let's just focus on the positive let's support one another because that's what's gonna keep music alive especially heavy metal it's if we are supportive we are just gonna support the heavy metal scene with such changing industry we have to support music we have to support live music whether it's female fronted whether it's a guy singing in a band doesn't matter we have to support the music in order to enable bands to keep doing what they're doing and let's continue making the change for the better and keep heavy metal alive yeah i do think we're making progress with that and i do think like we're continuing to break down the barriers continuing to celebrate women that do choose to go into metal rather than seeing it as a negative thing. As more women participate in all genres of metal, both in the audience and on stage, a woman in a metal band will become less and less of a thing. It's already less of a thing than it was when I got started. And I look forward to a day when it's not a thing at all. We're not your, there yet, but I think we'll get there when I'm still going to shows. Woman can be masculine also. Some kind of hero. And that's the thing that fascinates. If we are all the same and similar, same line in everything, so who cares? There is nothing special anymore. Uh, we have to be different and accept it. But I don't mean submission. He, we have a lot of power in our souls and it has to be pushed through. Maybe I need to live more into the metal scene to live at gender inequality. It hasn't happened to me or maybe not yet, but I don't care. Every time I'm on stage, I own it and that's all that matters to me. If a man can be tough, I can be tough too. Heavy metal has long welcomed fans from all across the globe. If somebody goes down in the pit, then the person who reaches down to pull them out of the chaos will almost inevitably be a different nationality, ethnic background, religion, or socioeconomic status. When heavy metal entwines its tendrils around your soul, it drags you into an all-inclusive club where such trivia no longer matters. I don't know if we'll ever be fully accepted by men. Um, you know, in this genre, but then you have to, you have to look at your definition of the word man, right? I don't think that someone who's sexist can be considered a man. I think it's one of the most unmanly things you can do is, is to, or, or, you know, have is to, is to have a, a sexist outlook on life. It's, it's, that's a little boy to me, you know? So when I think about a man, the word sexist doesn't come to mind. I don't know if we'll ever be fully accepted by certain people who are just out to discriminate, you know? Certain people are so stuck to their way of seeing things that their minds can't be changed. I don't think that we, again, like I said before, I don't think that we are even thinking about those people or, or are even trying to reach those people. As far as metal having been developed by men as an extreme expression of masculinity, I talk about this a lot. Um, I say this very often, you know, there are people who are attracted to metal for the aggression alone. Um, and those are the people who when metal is beautiful, you know, when there's, when it's melodic, when it's not just like, you know, pounding in your head the whole time. Well, I'm, I'm not interested in, you know, trying to open the mind of someone whose mind is closed, who, who, and someone who is dedicated to keeping their, their mind closed. That's not my mission. That's not, that's not what I'm here to do. Um, I think there are certain people who are attracted to this genre of music specifically for the aggression alone, who fail to recognize the other parts of it, the, the, the full spectrum of emotions that can be captured within this genre so easily and, and so beautifully. As far as being fully accepted as a woman, 
in this genre. I think we already are by the people who matter. So. Alors, j'espère, mais je pense que dans le futur, euh, peut-être que les femmes euh, trouveront une place, on va dire, euh, normale. Ça signifie rien, normal, dans le milieu du métal. C'est-à-dire que euh, elles y seront au même titre que les hommes, même si à la base c'était un milieu beaucoup plus masculin. Et d'ailleurs, quand on dit que c'était un milieu masculin, finalement. Euh, ça me fait bien rire, quoi, parce que quand on voit les, comment s'habiller certains mecs, euh, comment étaient habillés ou coiffés certains mecs euh, des, des vieux groupes de heavy metal, ça, c'est pas forcément euh, très, très masculin, c'est dans l'évidence. <rire> voilà. Ouais, je pense au blême. Et puis, euh, après, voilà, c'est pareil, c'est peut-être un cliché, quoi, mais je pense qu'il y a aussi plein de mecs, euh, alors c'est peut-être un cliché, hein, je, moi, je sais pas, j'arrive pas à me rendre compte, mais il y a peut-être quelques mecs quand même qui se mettent à faire de la guitare ou euh, de la musique euh, métal à un âge où on a envie de plaire aux filles ah, oui, que, euh, voilà. ça. donc même si c'est un milieu masculin je pense que ça peut pas rester un milieu 100% masculin quoi il y a forcément les filles elles ont une place de toute façon dans ce milieu là même si euh, c'est difficile pour certains mecs d'admettre que cette place elle peut aussi être euh, sur scène et euh, elle peut être euh, égale à la leur en ce qui concerne euh, le progrès ou les changements, c'est exponentiel, quoi. ça va de plus en plus vite. Euh... Ouais, vrai. Moi, ouais. ça, ça me fait halluciner quand je vois le nombre de petites gamines euh, musiciennes là, qui sont déjà en train de faire des vidéos de, de guitare ou de batterie sur YouTube euh, qui jouent du métal et qui ont déjà un niveau de malade. Ouais, ouais, je, mais je pense que de toute façon, pour que dans le métal, il y ait une évolution, il faut que déjà dans la société, tout simplement, de base, il y ait une évolution. Ouais, vrai. Et à ce moment-là, ouais, ce sera... Ou alors qu'il n'y ait plus d'hommes et que des femmes. Et là, du coup, ouais. <rire> c'est plus l'égalité. <rire> le pire, c'est que ce serait pas forcément plus respectueux. Là. Non, pas du tout. Non, non, c'est vrai que les. Parce qu'on en a pas parlé, mais. Euh... C'est vrai que les filles entre elles, elles sont oh, très. Il euh... n'y a, y a pas que, que certains mecs hein, qui refusent, enfin, qui, qui respectent pas les femmes. Oui, euh, les, les femmes dans entre le elles. Hein. Oui, les femmes entre elles, c'est des garces. <rire> on, se prend, euh, on se prend aussi des réflexions de filles qui te disent euh, voilà, mais de toute façon. Qu'est-ce que tu fais là, quoi Laisse la place au mec. Mmh. C'est pas, c'est pas une fille d'être sur scène. Ouais. Bon voilà. Après, il y a peut-être ou pas de la jalousie. Bon, je pense qu'il y a beaucoup de jalousie en fait dans tout ça. Puis peut-être aussi qu'elles, elles, elles, elles sont jalouses parce qu'elles ont pas assez confiance en elles pour, pour elles se lancer parce que c'est pas facile. Voilà. En fait, on en revient toujours à la même chose parce que c'est pas facile de rentrer dans ce milieu-là quand t'es une femme euh, entourée de mecs, quoi. Ouais. I definitely think so. The more women get playing metal, um, the more they show their writing skills, the more they show that they've been practicing loads, the more they will gain respect. I think it's all about this. Gain your popularity um, from your skills, from your music, and not from showcasing your body. I think that metal music is really about being authentic, being really who you are. So for females to be taken seriously in this genre and um, given the respect that they deserve or that you got to earn that respect, they need to always keep themselves at a high standard. Um, you know, you don't do things because you're trying to get like the fast track of success um, so like for me personally I um, I always keep the standard of like the way I present myself and um, you know it's okay to be sexy but like to just like straight up walk out on stage naked and things like that I think that does not set a good standard for females and it's not going to stop females being objectified when you're putting yourself out there like that. And there are people that do that, um, you know, if they enjoy it, that's fine. But I think that it's not going to help for strengthening the standard. And the more women that really instill that strong standard, uh, the better we're going to be for it. And we will get the respect we deserve. And we will be taken seriously because we are taking ourselves seriously. So it goes both ways, right? I do see within the next 10 years, probably even less, but maybe in the next 5 to 10 years, women, that whole stereotype of a female fronted metal band 
or a female in metal kind of going away and just being an awesome metal band in general. Um, even though it has been dominated by males, I think we're kind of getting more on an equal, equal level playing field now. So um, yeah, definitely within five years, that I think it's going to go away. In my opinion, women are already today accepted uh, fully in the rock genre. Um, I feel like rock is just as much feminine as it is masculine. Sometimes I think that if I could say something to myself when I was 14, 15, or even 20 years old, I would have some important advices. So basically, I say this to you that are a young female metal musician that never stop believe in what you do. If you love creating, producing music in the metal scene, just, uh, just continue doing it. Do what you love. And uh, focus on developing your musicianship and uh, you have the same equal rights to be in the metal scene and you you are good enough you are strong enough you are talented and don't stop never stop believing in who you are or where you belong I feel like women already are accepted in heavy metal, um, you know, symphonic metal, having an opera singer at the front of the band has really um, made women present in heavy metal, but at the same time I feel there's maybe this pressure that women just need to fit like that idea and that box and that frame of that's what a woman is supposed to be in heavy metal, but it's not. We have so many women doing guttural vocals and a mix of guttural and clean or just like having a rock voice and I think that's really important. Um, I think like my best advice is as scary as it is is for a woman to just be herself. Um, you know and in my case I mean I'm stuck doing many voice styles in Cradle of Filth but that's because of their back catalog. It's forced me to do that. But um, you know uh, I think we are accepted and uh, the fans speak loudest when it comes to that. So many um, artists and bands are moving up and, and being seen and recognized and loved and respected. But at the end of the day, I would, I would actually just love to see a day where my gender doesn't matter or mean anything because we're all treated equally for the person we are and not by our gender. Um, you know, yes, a woman's voice does sound different than a, a male's voice, but you know, at the end of the day, we're all people just trying to exist and do what we love, and hopefully that a gender won't define that, and I would love to see that day. I mean, it may not happen in my lifetime, but if it, it would be pretty damn cool if it did.